I know that I'm not pleased when even my granddaughter now or when my daughter was being raised or you're not, you're raising your children and they don't do what you say right away. That gets to, see, it's cute at first. Come here and they just take off running. Oh boy, you better come on back here. That's at first. And the older they get and the more people you around. See, you start saying stuff in your mind like, if I get you, um, if I get you. And all it takes is a child to be kind of, I don't want to use this kind of verbiage of here, uh, corrected with, let's say, two fingers and pressure. <laughs> uh, all day, they don't, not anymore. But that child kind of learns that look in your face. Kids don't even recognize that look anymore. You get that kid to look, kid go. Your look doesn't mean anything anymore. But when that child disregards what you tell them to do, you're not so anxious to give them a blessing. You're not so anxious to do something for them. And what makes us think that as Christians, it's okay for us when God says, I need you to diligently keep that umbrella up. And we don't, we don't think he means every time you get something in your hand, every time I put something there for you to give, I mean for you to do it. It is almost an insult to have to stop church, stop worship to worship. What? Yeah, because see, your giving is the only real indication that you are spiritually mature. When, when your child can come in and your child has a piece of candy and say, Mom, would you like some? Your child is now considered mature. If you're a person who does not give and offering bothers you, that, I don't care how hot your church is, what makes a church spiritually mature is their giving. Look at somebody and say, grow up. Now, if that insulted you, okay. You're wanting all of us to go to the mall with mama. You stay at home, but you want us to bring you some popcorn and a slush bag. It's not happening. So sometimes we wait until we feel like obeying God and we expect all these blessings to just fall on us. It doesn't work that way. What are you talking about here, Pastor Rush? I'm talking about instant obedience. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Everybody say, I owe. That's personal. Say, I, I owe. owe. Okay, so now when you stand up, you got to remember, not T-O. I'm saying, I, I owe. owe. Can we do that together? Okay. I, I owe. owe. Now, see, that's going to become very symbolic around this church. I will, just, I will just maybe stand up some Sundays and I'll go, hey. And everybody will think we're like chanting. No, that's instant obedience. I don't need you to remind me to do what God said. I want to do instantly. I want to obey. I've got to stay under the umbrella. I owe you. I owe you. Now, some of you may have felt real silly doing that. I'm going to say this is not an insult. You look a lot more sillier having a job, but never no money. Instant obedience. This ain't nothing. <laughs> Running and never leaving the same spot, it's kind of different. Can we go to verse 3 or you had enough? Verse 3. Let's look at verse 3. I'm just showing you now according to God's formula what he expects. He's already put this in motion, by the way. This is already in motion. You are, in Dallas, in Texas, rather, we, we have this day called Juneteenth. 
it's a celebration we have, which means that we received information that we, the slaves in Texas, had been freed, and we got it kind of late. See, the, the bill had already been put out, so it had to reach us, here in us, or the people in Texas, so we could find out about it. That's why it happened on June 19th. That was basically the celebration. That's basically what it means. So this that I'm reading you today is already in motion, but for some of you, you're just getting the document. Verse 3 says also, blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Look at somebody right now and tell them, it doesn't matter where you go. See, because wherever it is, you're going to be blessed. I, I really wish people would stop thinking that they determine how I'm going to be blessed. Wherever I go... If you're in the country, if you're in the city, if you're in Europe, Africa, Asia, South Dallas, East Dallas, West Dallas, North Dallas, wherever you go, look at somebody and tell them, God said, you will be blessed. Number four. Starting with verse one, it said, this shall come to pass, and thou wilt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord. There do all the commandments which I command thee, that the Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Now the Bible's starting to be alive to you. And all these blessings, all these blessings shall come on thee, and they will overtake thee. If, 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 if you do what I said in verse 1, if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord, I'll be in slothful. Then shall you be blessed in the city, and there shall be blessed in the field. If people don't, if people honor you in the city, they'll honor you there. And if they don't honor you there, they don't, they don't like you anywhere because they, some aren't ready for you. Now, then, then here, verse 4 gets kind of personal. Verse 4 is going to get personal. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Now, the fruit of your body... It's why I was saying some of you have never really honestly been consistent with giving God anything and you have drawn the conclusion that I'm blessed and I don't really do all that stuff they say. That's because you are the product of someone else who fell under this promise. But that doesn't keep you from walking outside of that umbrella. Because when he says, blessed shall be the fruit of their body, the fruit of your body is your children. Now, I'm going to tell you something that changed my whole attitude about tithing. When I read that when I give, I'm covering my daughter so that there are things that I don't even pray about that my seed takes care of. You're going to have to whoop my head to stop me from giving. Now, I don't know about you, but I know there have been times when I haven't been around my child when she's been in an extreme amount of trouble. And there are things that I will not know the day I go to my grave that I will not know that she did. But whatever it was, it was probably supposed to hurt her. It was probably going to kill her. It was probably going to put her in danger. But because there was a seed in the ground on her behalf, God said, I'm not liking what you're doing, girl, but I got to honor what your father did. If you ain't got no other reason than to get up off that gift. He said, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. That came from your seed. Whether it was intentional or not, Yeah, you can make some noise about that one. That's the one you can make some noise about right there. Y'all tolerate a lot of stuff, but when it comes to your children, you don't play with them children. Oh, no, you ought to be praying this scripture over your children and confessing over them right now. You ought to go home tonight and don't keep bringing those kids to me. God gave them to you. You ought to say to that child, you are blessed. Say that even when they don't bring home the right grades, even when they fuck in school, even when they get in the fight, even when you got to take off your job to go to court, you are blessed because that's what they're supposed to be. 
Your words should be full of blessings because your words have power. Don't let the enemy use your words to put your child in danger. Your words messed you up. How many times have your words cost you a job that made your child go hungry? Your words. I didn't make that up. That's right there in the word. Your words will become reality in your children's life. So don't change your confession. Don't change your words based on what you see in your children's lives. She just not working out right. He's just not getting it. Change your words. Continue to say, the fruit of my body is blessed. Say it. The fruit of my body is blessed. Say it. The fruit of my body is blessed. Say it. The fruit of my body. Say it. The fruit of my body is blessed. My children will follow God. My children will follow God. The fruit of my body is blessed. The child's having an asthma attack. The child just got arrested. You put your statement in there before the enemy gives his sentence. My children shall be blessed. The fruit of my body is blessed. If you've suffered, if you've cried, if you've been aching, if you've been in pain, if you've been, in, been without, why do both of y'all have to pay the same sentence? If you took all that punishment, at least let the child understand that you're covered. God speaks to me stronger about children sometimes than he does anything else. There are people that I know have left this church because they just don't like the way the children seem to just have so much access. It just doesn't seem like the right kind of God-honoring environment. You don't know God. 